Hey guys, welcome back to Vice. My name is Quinn. Uh, if you're like me, one of the first accessories you install on your new truck are lights. Um, I've gone ahead and installed some ditch lights on this new 2019 Ram 1500. Wiring, well, that's the hard part. Until now, let's get into it. So wiring buttons to control your lights and accessories in your cab on these new trucks is, uh, is pretty difficult. You don't want to drill in new holes into these expensive dashes. We've developed a kit around this aux beam switch button panel. Uh, this one here, the BA80, which the kit is designed around, has eight buttons to control any lights and accessories you want. Our kit includes all the brackets required to mount all the accessories, as well as loom, hardware, and a complete instruction set. So let's get right into it. Uh, first thing you want to do is park your vehicle on flat ground, uh, apply the e-brake, and chalk the tires. Next we're going to need access to the engine bay, so pop your hood. The next thing that we are going to install is the aux beam switch assembly and the aux beam breaker onto the vice engine bracket. So open the cover off of the switch assembly and line up these slots with the slots on the engine bracket. Using the shorter M6 Allen head cap screws and washer, insert those through the switch bracket onto the backside and retain in place with the M6 flange nut. Remove the plastic cover off the breaker and install onto the engine bra bracket with the longer M6 by 20 mil hardware. Grab your five millimeter Allen key and 10 millimeter socket and tighten those down. Next, we're going to install this rubber grommet into the hole between them. Again, sorry. Flip the bracket over and install the rubber feet into the bottom of the bracket. It helps to have a little flathead screwdriver to help it in place. Our next step is protecting the red 8 gauge cables that come with the aux beam kit with the loom provided in the vice hardware kit. Split loom does exactly that. It splits around the cable and just walk it around. When it's on there, cut it to length and then hold it in place with some electrical tape. and repeat for the other cable. Slide the shorter of the two wires down through the grommet. And up through the switch assembly and attach it to the positive. Attach this end to the breaker. Using a 10 millimeter socket, disconnect the battery negative and tie it out of place. Uh, zip tie works great. This will keep the terminal from contacting the connector. The aux beam engine assembly that we just put together mounts right here. If you have an eco diesel, it mounts using these two fasteners as we have. If you have a Hemi or gas powered truck, it mounts using the fasteners located in this location and this location. Just loosen them off a couple turns. Grab your aux beam engine assembly, 
pinch it in between the ECU and the block bracket there. The rubber feet should sit flat on the battery. Just hold it down there and re-tighten these fasteners. So grab the ACC wire, that's this one from the Oxbeam kit. Cut it to about 24 inches, two feet, and crimp it to the fuse tap, the smaller one, the micro fuse. And with the remainder of the quarter inch loom, protect this cable by wrapping the accessory wire in it. Route the accessory wire up through the aux beam switch and attach it to that terminal there. Take the fuse tap end, route it down and along the power cable and up into your fuse box. So this accessory wire is a signal cable. It tells you tells your aux beam when to turn on, when your vehicle turns on. Uh, a good place to tap power for that is spot 37. So grab your fuse remover that's built into your fuse panel. Grab that 5 amp fuse there. And put this 5 amp fuse into this piggyback terminal. Take this and put it right back into the same spot we removed it from. Then tidy up the cables. We're now ready to install the eight gang button panel onto the vice interior bracket. First thing to do is install the rubber grommet onto the bottom of this bracket, just like you did on the engine bay bracket. Next, we're going to install the eight gang switch panel onto our interior bracket. This already has the factory aux beam bracket attached. Hold these together, grab the supplied six mil by 14 mil fasteners, slide it through the slot, and retain it in place with the M6 flange nut. Do this again for the other side. We're going to leave these just finger tight because once we get it in the truck, we can adjust it so it fits well with uh, our assembly. So the interior bracket mounts to a fastener located in behind this cap. So with a little pry tool, we're just gonna remove that. That gives access to the fastener using a 10 millimeter socket, remove it. Grab this longer metric fastener that we supply, through, put it through the bracket. In behind the bracket, put on the machined black plastic spacer. And this assembly is going to attach like so. The rubber bumper will sit on your center console, protecting it. Once this is lined up, tighten down the fastener with a 10 millimeter socket. Next up is to align your eight gang panel with your dash so it flows nicely. Take your five millimeter Allen key and five or 10 millimeter ratchet and tighten it down. Now your button panel is super easy to access from the driving position. So back in the engine bay, take your four wire aux beam harness, plug it into the switch assembly. Route the other end down through the opening in the bracket and towards the firewall. There are a couple places we can go through the firewall. 
where the shift lock release cable goes through right there is probably the easiest. There's a place up in the top right here that you can put smaller wire wires through if you cut a nub off. Um, the controller connector is a little bit too big to fit in. So we're gonna go into the inside of the cab, cut a small incision in there and pass the wire through. Uh, so back in the cab, underneath your pedals, this is where that cable goes through. We are gonna fold the inside up and make an incision. Let's move so we can see into the grommet behind. Uh, we are then gonna feed some mechanics wire or a coat hanger through and up into the engine bay. So I put a loop in the end of this mechanics wire. I'm going to tape this connector that goes to the eight gang panel to it and then pull it through the grommet in the firewall. Pull the wires all the way through. Leave about six inches of slack on the other side so the wires aren't strained. We're now going to remove the panel located right underneath the steering wheel. To do that, grab a seven millimeter socket and undo the two fasteners located by the foot hole. So this panel is held in with six clips. To release it, just start grabbing the panel here and pull straight out. And again on this side, straight out. We're now gonna route the eight gang harness up along existing um, factory wiring harnesses, making sure that we're staying away from any moving objects, especially brake and gas pedals up and behind here and across through this slot here and connect it to your eight gang panel. Now there's a little notch there. We want to align the two of those up. Don't force these together and thread that down. Once that is done, we can now group all our cables together, bunching them together, any excess, and securing it well out of the way. And I will tie those to this wiring harness right there. So is it secured in place? The harness that comes out of the eight gang panel slide it up and pop it into this little perfect slot right there like it was meant to be which will be nice because it will keep the harness up and out of the way so with the wiring secured out of the way we can now put this panel back in place give it a push and then secure it in place again using the hardware that you removed out of the bottom. Back in the engine bay, we're gonna take our remaining eight gauge red cable that we've wrapped in loom and attach it between our breaker and our number two stud on the fuse box. Once those are tight, use the sap straps and secure this loom out of the way so it's not flapping or rubbing on any sharp objects. Let me get you. Where are my short kings at? 
So we're now going to attach the eight gauge black ground cable to the aux beam switch assembly down and attach it to the top of the battery negative terminal. So now it's time to attach your accessories that you're going to be powering with your switch assembly. Um, we have our ditch light bracket wiring that comes in through here. So we're routing it up here. These lights draw 2.6 amps each at 12 volts. Um, so we're going to wire them up to our 10 amp circuit. Um, we've got it on number six, two, three, four, five, six. And so just connect back these off all the way with your little bitty screwdriver. Make sure that they're fully in there and tighten down. Same for the negative. With uh, all the wiring secured, we can now place the cover back on our switch assembly and connect the battery negative. and tighten back down with a 10 millimeter socket. Now that this is fastened back in, make sure that your negative terminal that your grounding wire is, is tight as well. So that takes us to the end of the installation. Uh, only thing left to do now is test her out. So when you click your start button to run, the panel should light up. So we have our ditch light kit wired up to this button here, which we put the windshield sticker on and you click it on. It's a nice positive feeling click. Red light indicates that that uh, switch is getting power. So that completes the install of our aux beam mounting kit. Um, yeah, whether you're mounting one light or eight lights, this is really the, the way to do it. Um, super easy. Now every accessory that we add, we don't have to go through routing everything through the firewall and hooking up a relay. Um, we're gonna put a Mod V2 bumper on here with a light bar, with lights on the top, with fog lights. So um, we have the foundation already to just wire those up and make the installation a lot easier. If you wanna buy this kit, we have a link in the description below. If you guys have any more wiring questions about these trucks or wiring up different accessories, comment below and we'll see if we can help you out.